Okay, so can everybody see my screen? I can't. Just a second, sorry. Yeah, no, I can't see anything. It takes, it takes just a second to load. I, sh I spoke too soon. Can you see my screen now? It's just black. Yeah. Okay. And so as soon as I do this, can you see this normal curve? Yeah, I can see Okay, it. all right. So this is what we're talking about in Chapter 6. Essentially, many things that we do, including packaging product, our height, um, our blood pressure, all sorts of things follow a particular distribution. And the only distribution that we're going to study, there are many of them. The only one we're going to worry about studying is this thing called the normal. Some people call it a bell curve. Okay. And it's going to be this shape. So most of our, most of us, whether it's my, um, cholesterol level or so forth is going to fall in this big chunk of a curve right here. So I'm not sure if you got any reading done or not, but this is one standard deviation above so i'm going to make it positive and this is one standard deviation below it's and not showing on my screen yet oh it's not on yours is it showing mm -hmm. on yours it just has a black screen with a p on it mm, really keith is it showing on yours yeah i can see that on mine hmm. and gwen you can see it so i'm not sure misty let me see so you're not seeing anything but a black p can you see gwen yeah. and keith or not? Um, yeah, I can see them. Hmm. I'm on my phone though, so I don't know if it's something. Uh, it might be. So I'll kind of describe what I have drawn here, okay? I have a bell shaped or normal distribution curve. Do you know what that looks like, Misty? Yeah. Okay. And I've got this big chunk, the middle chunk, one standard deviation, and I'm going to call it a step up from center, which I'm going to label zero one step from that value up and one step from that value down is going to have 68% of us fall in there. So if I go to the doctor and they say, you know, your cholesterol level for your age and gender is about where it's supposed to be. I would be in this range. Okay. 68% of us fall in there. Okay. I'm going to step out. So now I have two marks on each side. So I have two standard deviations, one above and one below. So a total of two now. And if you did any, if you were able to look at this, there would be 95% of us. So if I go to the doctor and he says, or she says to me, boy, you're really tall. Where would I fall if I was really tall? On the right or on the left? What do you guys think? Where would tall people be? On the right? Yeah, so this would be very tall. Okay, so that's how when I look at somebody, not only because I know what a tall person looks like, I can measure them against other people. And so that's really tall. So that is positive three steps above. So I'm calling standard deviation now my step. And my steps can vary in size. So, whoops, that's a standard deviation. So we'll talk about that. And in fact, about 99.7 of us fall three standard deviations above or below. So almost all of us fall in that range. So there are people that fall outside of that range. Would you agree? Can you think of somebody that would be taller than the tallest? Well, there's a guy called Robert Wadlow, and he was he was over eight feet tall. Well, when was the last person, time you saw somebody that was even seven feet tall? Probably not very often. So Robert is this guy that was way out here. That's why we can't end these curves because this is our whole population, and we can't cut anybody off. So essentially what you're going to be doing is if I, so we're just going to do it generically. So if I tell you that you're in the center and I say that you are one and a half steps above center, where are you at? Are you tall or short? We'll just stay with the tall and short business. Are you tall or short? What do you think? Tall. Yeah, you're pretty tall. You're right in here. Okay, so Missy, I just drew kind of where they were at on the normal curve. I can see it now. I don't know. It just oh, that's me. weird. Okay, great. So this also has to do with testing. So many of us take standardized tests. And so there was a lecture that talked about where this value would be. So if this is 34%, this would be 84. If you were in the 84th percentile, that's where you would fall. Are there people that scored better than you? Absolutely. 84% scored below you, how many, per, how many as a percent scored above? 
84 was below you, how many would be above you? 16. Yeah, for a total of 100%. Exactly. So that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be finding your location. So if I look at, I am one and a half steps above, like, what is my percent here? That's what I'm worried about. It's like, hmm, if I fall here at zero, that means 50% are above me and 50% are below me. If I fall at one, I can see that's 85%, oops, sorry, 84% are below and 16% are above. But if I'm at 1.5, like where am I falling in relation to everyone else? So there were two pages that you had to get out of your book. Did you guys look at those two pages at all? Were you able to see them? And maybe, maybe you are not quite this far. I'm not sure exactly where you are at, but let's go. I'm going to pull up the course and this looks terrible to you right now. Let me find where I want to go. There are two tables that you're going to need to know. And I included them with your, um, right underneath your big idea. So I'm going to pull them up and there's a whole bunch of numbers here. Okay. So if you recall, just a second ago, I said you were at 1.5 above. You are tall. So how, where are you at on this table? 1.5. So that would be your Z-score. That's what a Z-score is, is where do you fit on that table in terms of standard deviations or steps? You are one and a half step. So this number that I have highlighted right here, if I just round that, you see it's 93%. Are you guys mm -hmm. okay? Okay. So that says 93% are what? Shorter or taller than you? I'm going to bring up my picture. Are they shorter than you or taller than you? Shorter. Yeah. So you have 93%. I'm just going to round it for now so we don't have to worry about decimals. So if 93% are shorter than me, how many are taller than me? 7% for a total of 100%. So if I'm looking out there, I'm pretty tall. Okay. Are there people taller than me? Yes. Okay. It doesn't tell you how tall I am. It just compares me to others. And obviously this would be your gender, your age, and all sorts of things that this would have to be based upon. Okay. So let's look at your big idea. If you haven't gotten there, that's fine. Let's look at your big idea and see if it kind of makes sense. So the big idea comes off of some data that's out there. And there is a section for women and there is a section for men. So if you are male, only do men. It's not appropriate that you would do a female because they have a whole different curve and vice versa. So since we have two females there, we're just going to do the first one. And it says a female is approximately normally distributed in terms of their height. The average or mean, so we always, we've been using this word average, so there's different averages, and we're always going to use the mean average, is 63.8 inches and a standard deviation of 4.2. So if I go back and draw a picture of that, and I could do the same thing for the men, if I want to draw a picture of that, so I've got my curve here, okay, and in the center is the 63 point, oh, I've already forgotten it. What was it? 63.8. Okay. And my standard deviation is 4.2. So essentially all you're doing is a formula that has it go like this. The distance one step above is 4.2 taller. So how many inches would it be? 67. And so would you agree that this would be 68 right here? And one step below would be 63.8. And what are you going to do with that 63.8 to show that you went down a step? Subtract. Yeah, subtract. Okay. So, it's, oh, this is a one, sorry. Okay. So my curve is not symmetric. It should be. Okay. So if I am 68 inches tall, and I can tell you in terms of, what that would be. I'm five foot. That would be about five foot right here. Let's see. 68 inches is five foot. And let's see. 
five foot. Uh, whoops, I went the wrong way here. Just a second. Five foot eight about. This is about five foot eight. Okay, so if you are a female that's five foot eight, would you agree a female five foot eight looks a little tall? Not super tall. Okay, but if I go one step out, that's 68 plus 4.7 inches. And I just have a calculator here, so I'm just adding so I don't make a mistake. That is 72.7. Okay, so what is that in terms of feet? Well, that is, what do you, what do you think? So let's see, 72 divided by 12. Do you kind of follow where I'm going with this? And I have where did you get the, where did you get the four point seven? Four point seven. Good question. Four point seven. I'm gonna write this down. Four point seven came from right here. Oh right here. Four point oh, did I mix up men and women? What should, yeah, that's what uh, I was like, oh, Rod, what should it be? <laughs> ah dang it, I didn't want to do that. So this is women. I got to keep women with women. So this is 63.8. And if I step up one step, I've stepped up 4.2. So that should have been a two. And so that should have been 68. So I was okay there, right? Five foot eight yeah. inches. So then I'm going to go up another 4.2. So 68. So that's 72.2. Would you be okay with that? And that's about six. That's a little bit more than six feet. Okay, so as a female, that is six foot two tall. Would you say they're tall or short? Tall. They're tall. Okay. Right, right. So let's look. So let's look at this table. Problem. The table, if we look at the table, there is no six foot two female in this table. This table has to do with the number of steps they are from the average or mean. So how many steps was this six foot two female from the center, which was about five, six? How many steps up were they? Take a look at the picture here. How many steps did they go? Oh, I got my pen, I guess. One step, two steps. So do you see that they're two steps above? So if okay. I go back here and I go two steps above, what does this number 90, I'm going to round it to 98 just because I don't want you to worry about decimals right now. How many people are shorter than that person that is female six foot two? 98% are shorter and 2% are taller. Okay, so let's go look at this. And that's what you're doing is you're seeing in terms of steps, so Gwen, you were asking me about steps. In terms of steps, how far away from the middle are they? So here, a female height step is 4.2 inches. A male is 4.7 inches. Okay, so that's just, that's all that's measuring. And in steps, how far are you from center? Okay, so... If you look at this, this is that eight, this is that 68%. Okay. And then it talks about, if you think about a person that is 48 inches tall or four feet tall, I don't know that I know a female, a growing uh, female that is 48 inches tall. If I look at this curve, which is now messy, which I'll get rid of my pen here. I'm not sure why it's doing that, but if I look at this curve, where is a female that is only 48 inches tall? Would you agree it would be way down here? Mm -hmm. Okay, how many steps away are there? Okay, how many steps? So if I go one step, that went from my 63.8 and I went down one. And the step size here is 4.2 because it's female. That puts me at 59.6. I'm going to drop another step, which puts, puts me at 55.4. Have I reached her yet? That's two steps. Let's go minus one more step. So it's all in steps. So that's down to 
51.2. Is this person more than three steps below center? Would you agree with that? Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna have to use some math to find that. This is where some people that haven't had algebra for a while get a little kind of confused about what's going on. So if I look, here I am at 48 inches. How far am I from the middle person, which was given to me at 63.8? How far is that? Well, I've got a calculator here. So I'm gonna go 63.8, and you can watch me do that if you want, minus 48. So this is 15.8 inches away from the center. Okay, are you good with that? But how many steps? How many leaps did I need to take to get there? Well, how big is my step? 4.2. So I'm going to take my calculator. I'm going to divide by 4.2, and I get 3.76 steps. Now, why do I put a negative on it? What do you think that negative represents? It's telling you to go to the left. Yeah, it's telling me below. Yeah, it's telling me I'm shorter. I'm below. So if I look at my table, this is what you'll have here. Does this table, oh, these are positive. So all of these represent that I'm above. So I'm going to have to look at this table. Does my table read 3.7 steps below? It doesn't. Are there people down there? Yeah, there could be. So basically, I'm answering these for you. Basically, on here, you can say, tell me your z-score, and you can't read it off the table. It's so small that there's very, very few. Okay? So sometimes you can't even give an exact number because it's so few. Let's look at this next one, number three. You have to need to watch this little video that's with this, and it's called the beanstalk. So Boston has a beanstalk. So beanstalks are... Sometimes people call them a beanstalk because they're tall and thin. Well, it doesn't necessarily need to be thin here. It's just talking about your height. Okay, and it's a club for tall people. There's even shows out there for um, dating when females are really tall to find someone to date. I don't know if you've seen those. Um, and so basically it's asking questions about what proportion, okay, what percentage, what value off the curve that we just showed off that table, okay, would make you eligible okay, to be in the beanstalk. So you have to watch that. And then the next question just has to do with you. Okay, So your height if you're female or your height if you're male. So let's just practice this for just a minute here. Okay, So I'm going to, not sure how I can get rid of this messy stuff. So I'm going to write on the paper here. And so let's just try a couple. Let's suppose, and I'm not even going to put it in a context, okay? Here's my curve. I'm going to say the center is, uh, let's go the center is 10. Okay? The standard deviation, so here's what you were talking about, Gwen, is 2. So that's my step size. If I am at 12, this is me, we're going to call it my observation X, is at 12. How many steps above is this person right here? If this is the step size and I need to go from 10 to 12, where would I be at? Would it be one step? It would be, and that's what Z is. My step is 2, I went one step, and I got to 12. Okay, what if I said this was me and my value is 9? So I'm always comparing to the center. So how much of a step do I need to drop to get to 9? A whole step? What would a whole a step? It would be a half of a step, right? A whole step would take me down to what number? 8. Right. So I've given you guys some numbers that work nicely. So here's the formula. You find the number of steps you are away from center by taking your value, subtracting it from the center, and dividing it by the size of the step, like how many steps are in that distance. 
So for example, I was at 12, I was two away, my step size was two, so I was one total step away. I was at nine. How far am I away from center? One, but my step is size two, so I'm only a half of a step. I didn't have to drop a whole step to get to this value that I was at with nine. Okay, questions about this formula. Okay, why am I dividing it by two? Because that is my standard deviation. So the formal look of this would look like this over your standard deviation. Okay. Questions about that formula. So let's go look up a half. Now, is this half positive or negative? Be negative. And why? How come? Just because the 9 is lower than the 10 and you're going Exactly. Exactly. So let's look it up and let's just see if that was me. And maybe it's my cholesterol. Okay, I'm going to go a half of a step. So a half of a step is right here. Would you agree? So look at the table up here. It always reads people below me. So how many people are below me? Can you just round that number? 30. No, we've got three of you out there. Nobody wants to talk because you over-talk each other. So I'll just answer. You're 31% below. So that means 69% are above you. Now, what are all these other numbers? Well, here's what can happen. And this is why you need a formula, because it's not always going to be those nice numbers that I've been working with. So maybe here's the situation. And so we're always going back to this curve. Okay, and so when you do your homework, you're going to always want to draw this curve. Okay, so maybe my center is 17. And maybe I am sitting at, and again, I don't know if this is maybe my math test score or something. I don't know. Maybe I'm sitting at 18.3. Am I above or below? Above. Okay. Is my Z score going to be positive or negative? Positive. Good. And let's suppose my standard deviation is 0.9. Rarely do you have a standard deviation that's one, two, three, okay? So here we go. This is me. I'm subtracting, and it looks like I'm 1.3 as a distance above the center. Questions on where I got that? But now I, now I need to divide it into the size of my step, okay? So that's why you're going to have to have just a basic calculator here. Your phone can do this. So I've got 1.3 divided by 0.9. How many steps am I above center? More than a step I am. Okay. A whole step and not quite a half more. So let's look at that number up in your table. So I need 1.44. So I need the positive. Here's 1.4. So I just cursor over and why do you think I have this number highlighted in my table? What does that number mean? Let's round it to 93%. What does that tell you? Ninety-three percent are below you, because that's always what that, that's going to read. So if I look at um, this picture again. I know that 18.3 is someplace up here. I, I understand that. But how many steps did it take me to get there? 1.44. And that number right there will tell me that 93% are below me and 7% are above me. Okay. So that's all you're doing in this chapter. So if you can think about where am I at in relation to center, and then how many steps will it take me from center to get to that location? Above is positive, below is negative, and then you find the percentage using these tables to say how many as a percentage are below me.
everything's going to be in a percent. That's how we like to compare things. Okay, we put it on an equal playing field. So that's essentially what you do in your big idea and in your homework. What are you going to do in your homework? Well, you just did a project. Do you have data? And you have a mean? And you have a standard deviation? So it's asking you to, first of all, check normality. Okay, so there are three ways you can check normality. And again, this is all in the course. Okay, there's a video on it. Here's one way to check normality. You all made a histogram. Look at your histogram and see if you had more packages, would it maybe start to follow that shape? Now look at this is, if you watch this video, they start off pretty rough, but the more and more you get, so that's one way to check normality, okay? And that's what is asked of you here. It says create a histogram. You've, mo you've done that in your project. Just copy it out. Okay. When you create your histogram, take a look at the distribution. You did it in homework chapter four. So just talk about that. The next thing is the empirical rule. So uh, what was the empirical rule? Do you remember? The empirical rule is what we've been doing saying this that within this range right here within looking at this from one standard deviation below and one standard deviation below what percent of all of my data oh, you got to look at this what percent of all of my data should fall in there Sixty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. So if my mean is 28.2, don't go with what the, you have to go with your data. So my mean is 28.2 and my standard deviation is, I'm making these numbers up, up 0.15. Is that lots of spread or not very much spread? Not very much. Right. So this guy right here is 28. 0.2 grams plus this, which is 28.35 grams. This value is 28.05 uh, grams. So one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below gives me these values, 28.05 to 28.35. You have a list of data. You need to see how many of your pieces fall in this region and then you tally them. Okay. So if I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine out of uh, maybe I had 19 pieces. If I look, nine out of 19 pieces or packages would give me 47%. What am I hoping for? 68. But I only got 47. Does that mean to stop? No, it's just you only had 20 pieces of data and that's going to change it by about 5% every time. Okay. So where can you go to get an example of this? So let's go ahead and look in the homework section. Okay. So it says right here, if you look at the example 6.6 .6 on page 347. So I'm going to take you to the textbook. 347, it told me, right? 374. Oh. 374. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's been a long day and it's only 130. <laughs> oh my gosh. Does this look at what, look what I was just doing right there. So if you follow this example, okay, it'll tell you exactly how to go about doing it. Here's their data. You have data. There's their data. You don't need to do this one. You need a calculator for that. And I wasn't guaranteed that everybody would have a calculator. Their data looks somewhat normal. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. They don't have probably enough to look at. And then look at what's right here. Exactly what I was doing. Does that look familiar to what I was doing right here? I set up and found my region from one step below to one step above, counted my data. So if you look at this, 
see if I can get us back there. If you look at this, they counted how many of their pieces of data went from 33.5 to 47.9. They counted them. 22 does not fit. Okay, so if you look, 22 does not fit in there. 32 does not fit. 32 does not fit. So they went through, and the first one that fit in there was anything above 33 and a half, which would be this piece right here. So they just counted. Okay, and they had 39 total pieces of data. So that's why they got 59%. Now what a lot of people do when they do two steps is they forget to count everybody that was in one and add two. So you have to think about if I had two steps, I'm gonna just get a different color here. If I had two steps, Wouldn't my two steps be all of these values and these? So do you see it's wider, it's bigger? It's going to have a bigger percent. In fact, we're striving for 95%, but we probably won't get exactly 95. So if we looked at what they did, they got 94.9. Hmm, That's pretty darn close to 95. So this is essentially the exact same thing you're going to do with your data that you used on your project exactly the same. This homework assignment, if you get it in soon enough, I can help you do revisions on it. This homework assignment is the next thing that gets added to your project. So by the time the class is over, you will have done a statistical analysis from beginning to end on that particular product that you chose, or I chose for you, I should say. Okay, so I'm going to stop questions. Okay. No, I think I'm good. Are you good? Okay. I hope anyway. Yeah, well, get a hold of me if not. But remember, all of that's kind of right in here. That's the textbook. But if you go out here and look, okay, there's lectures you should watch if you're confused. So this talks about assessing normality, exactly what you need to do on your project. So there's a video showing it, and there's a written example showing it. Okay, that's posted in here, and it tells you exactly the page number to go to. Okay? Okay. Keith, how are you? All right? Yep, I'm good. Yeah, does it make more sense to you? I know you yeah, haven't even does. started, but it makes more sense, because I just don't, I don't want you to struggle. Not that you struggled on your project, you just got confused. Mm -hmm. So if you go into this confused, you are spinning your wheels and wasting your time, okay? Yeah. So make sure to get a hold of me if that's the case, okay? okay. Gwen, how are you doing? Uh, I think I'm doing okay. Does standard deviation make more sense to you? Um, yeah, I'm just going to look at it a little bit more and just uh, make sure I can understand it. But I, I think I'm getting the hang of that one, though. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one more with you, okay? So if this, okay. Is, if this is my curve, this is my center, and I say my standard deviation is five. My first step would show what? What would this number be if I went one step above? Oh, 15. And then two steps above? Uh, 20. And then? 25. Okay, and then I would do this. Can I have negative? Absolutely, you can have negative, okay? If I took, and I said my 10 was my middle, but what if I said my step size was only two? So my curve would be much tighter because here I would have 12, 14, 16. Do you see why my curve is tighter in than this one? My step size isn't as long. Oh, okay. So it's a smaller distance, a shorter distance, I should say, to get to the number one above versus a five distance to get to the number one above. That's why the curves sometimes are really skinny tall and some are times are really spread out. Okay. Okay, but you're always measuring how far you are from that center point. Okay. Okay? And that's the mean, right? And the mean is always the center point from now on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, we're always going to use the mean. Yeah, even if we have outliers, like you reported in the project, that's okay. We're still going to use the mean for right now. We'll talk about how we can take care of outliers and why maybe we had them. Okay? okay. All right. Can I answer any other questions about Chapter 6? 
I'm a little concerned because it's due on Monday. Okay, so you have a couple days, but it does take a little bit of time. So good for you for getting started. Okay, but get a hold of me. I think everybody understand the big idea. You have to watch a lecture. We've done part of it already. And then the homework, we've just talked about it, taking your set of data. There's some other questions to answer there. And they're solely built upon algebra, like solving an equation. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Not for me. All right. Thanks for joining us. Anybody else have questions? No, I'm good. Good. Keith, you're fine? Yep. I'm All right. Good. All right. Get a hold of me, you guys, if you need some help. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. okay. Thanks. You bet. Thank you. Uh-huh. You bet. Bye.